You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show where we're talking about intelligent recommendations with my friend Moon King. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Show. We're talking about intelligent recommendations with Moon King. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, thanks. Fantastic. So why don't you tell us who you are and what you do? Okay, so I'm a program manager at Microsoft and I work on intelligent recommendations, which is an AI and machine learning driven discovery solution. That's that's amazing. Now, has this been around for, for a long time? It has actually. Um, we've been around uh, for 12 years, but most of that time we were actually uh, been working with products that people are very familiar with like Xbox or Windows desktop or, you know, our Microsoft store. And we've been pairing recommendations within Microsoft. And uh, last year, we got the chance to bring it to the world through Azure. Fantastic. So what is an intelligent, what does the intelligent recommendation system actually do? What's pro what problem is it solving? So discovery, which is a huge space, uh, it's, you know, about finding things you know of and maybe, you know, some key terms and that's search. Recommendations, it fills the rest of the space where a lot of times people have interests and tastes, but finding that right thing at the right time is a, a very difficult challenge. Sometimes, you know, you find something that sort of fills that need, but not more precisely. And uh, enabling a way to go down the rabbit hole, if you will, to find that thing that really fits you is what Recommendations is all about. Fantastic. And so I put, I put your slide up there. Why don't you tell us what's going on here? Um, so a lot of times, uh, you know, I always thought about Recommendations as something for people, for people to have a better life using whatever to find what they need. Um, and so, of course, like it helps them to do engagement thing activities like with digital content or when they're shopping or when they're looking for things like documents. But of course, for businesses who are looking at recommendations and its usefulness, it's all of those activities that engage users actually drive up conversion, revenue, CTR, engagement. Um, and it works on all sorts of different scenarios that people don't often um, easily connect to recommendations. A lot of times people think, okay, uh, like only Netflix like scenarios, but really all sorts of different UX experiences, like whether you're on the homepage for something or you're on a sort of landing page for categories, or you've gone all the way down into a detail page for something, recommendations can help find more content or more products. That's, that's really cool. And so what are you, what are you showing us here? So these two are just sort of an illustration for if you use um, behavioral information, it could be, you know, people who looked at this also looked at or uh, conversions, then you can get personalization like picks for you, like based on your historical activities, what would we suggest to you? And then on the other illustration, it's sort of showing you, well, at a product details page, what might that look like when you're doing an item to item sort of connection? And all of this is, um, I think we're familiar in lots of different ways, but we don't always know that it's machine learning. Our primary um, mechanism for driving this is collaborative filtering, but we actually, as I wanna show you on the next couple of slides, do a lot more in terms of using textual information or visual information now to drive those uh, connections. All right, well, let's dive in. What do you got for us? Okay, so um, the next slide, uh, I, I do want to pause to say before I go into that is that it, this is an Azure service. You can instantiate it very easily. And when we built it, we actually had um, a very strong notion in our mind, like our tagline has this, that we're here to democratize AIML. And so we wanted to make sure that it was fully turnkey. If somebody wanted this just recommendations, they could plug it into whatever ecosystem they have and um, they can they can get going, whether they have a data scientist or not. But we also know that a lot of companies have data scientists, so like encouraging them to use this to get started so they don't have to build a full wheel, but sort of do all of the cool things for their business and then unique needs, they can fill that in. And then I'll actually let's skip to the next slide. 
to show you some of the scenarios that people are starting to use um, with the service. So I think so our crown jewels in our in our space that are the bread and butter that we've used for years and we know has tremendous impacts, like huge double digit lifts in revenue in CTR um, are all about like things that use behavior, such as if customers buy something, you know, what else do they buy? And we call that people also like. And I say do in our text um, as opposed to buy, because really one of the beautiful parts about our system is um, we have this generic schema, if you will, or, or strict schema, but we don't really care what you put in as long as the behavior you want sort of um, can match up. So if you put in transactions into this um, people also do list, you'll get people buy this also buy. If you were to put in, suppose I'll make up a, a, a signal that says people read this then if you put that in, you'll get an output of people who read this article also read. Mm -hmm. So it's really adaptive in that way. And with that same sort of usage information, we get several other things, actually. We get personalization for a user. So based on their historical information, we can say, OK, this is what we think you'd really like and based on your tastes. Um, we can also do session-based personalization, which is huge if you think about it, because um, something like in a retail scenario, online retail stores, very few people actually sign in. I think I've heard various different estimates, something like 70% um, of visitors are anonymous to as high as 80 or 90. Um, so this is a way to engage those people to say, okay, you, we just saw you, you know, looking at this within this session. So maybe these things interest you. Um, some other things that we do with usage information are like next best action. In a retail context, that's often called like frequently bought together. But the basic notion is, how do you create baskets of items that go together because they're complementary? Because that's what people tend to put together. Um, yeah, this is this is really interesting. If I if, if let me see if I'm understanding you correctly, Moon, because I want to make sure. So basically, any action that your software a user can take, you can use the intelligent recommendation to suggest similar actions based upon other people or the thing that they're looking at. Am, am I getting this right? Yes, yes, yes. Just one tweak. Okay. Uh, to what you said, instead of similar action, similar items based on those actions taken by other people. Oh, I see. Yeah. That, that yeah. makes sense. So, and, it, and it all my examples here kind of show retail clothing, but that's like, don't let that fool you. That's just for the purposes of being able to talk to people and put a slide together. But really, the, the thing you're looking at could be documents, could be, you know, support tickets. It could be videos. It could be digital goods. It, it could be, um, you know, anything like legal documents when there's a ton of volume of those items and a ton of interactions with those items, you can you can drive recommendations. And that's cool because now that I'm understanding a little better, basically any item that you have in your system, whatever it may be, all the verbs that use that noun, now you can make it so that they can do those verbs with other nouns that are similar. Am I, am I getting this right? Yes, yes. That's a that's a actually that's a perfect way to describe it. Mm. I'm going to start using that now. I, I love it. So this is this is awesome. But is it is it, how hard is it to set something like this up? You mentioned earlier that you wanted people to be able to just jump into it and use it, but it feels like I've done collaborative filtering before, and there's some maths and other stuff involved. Do you have what is it like to set I'll, it up? I'll here? show you exactly how to do it and how simple it is. Okay. Um, but before I do, I want to show you uh, talk about two other things. Let's do it. So similar looks and similar descriptions. These don't use collaborative filtering. They actually use, in case of similar looks, visual cognition. Um, and this example, I think, is a really nice illustrative one where we didn't pass the system any kind of uh, notes about it or even behavior. All we passed it was the product image. And it's able to find other dresses with that kind of pattern. Um, you know, and I, I like to shop for dresses. I would never have called that red dress a gradient ground. I would have called it an ombre. So that's what I would have typed in. But then you can see the results like give exactly what I'd expect by the look. And that's the power of visual stuff in cases where you can apply it. Like jewelry, furniture, and clothing, we've seen it do wonderfully. Similar That's descriptions cool. is sort of like the other side where if the most interesting, pertinent, is quintessential information about a thing is in the text, then you can use that. 
Um, it uses the latest NLP tech, and we actually got better results than than many other competitors that we looked at above and beyond like what they were doing. Um, and our technique is actually patented in that too. And it really can find like synonyms. It's not about keywords and searching, but really looking at the description of a thing, you can find other very, very close stuff. Um, one area that it works great in is like wine or other foods like cheese and chocolates. Like if you're like me, you know, I go to the wine aisle and I'm like, I can't tell the difference between which has a leather notes or pencil shavings, but you know, like you don't need that sort of expertise in a specific field to just be like, oh, I like this wine normally, like what's like it? And it would find it for you. This is this is cool because I I, I was looking at the verbs, right? But it's the intrinsic nouns also that the intelligent recommendation gets to reason over as well and not reason like in a, it's exactly the same word or exactly the same picture, but things that are similar as well. Yeah, is this right? yeah. Yeah, and I'll actually, um, this picture in the similar descriptions is actually from a real customer who gave us permission to show this. They have mostly home goods in their store, but they had a few things um, that weren't as popular. So something like people also buy or people also view wasn't really giving a lot of results because it doesn't have that many interactions. And um, you can look at this description of Boris the Badger. Uh, it doesn't mention children, kids, stuffy, you know, any of those sort of um, words, toy, but the results that came out were perfect. Like here's a fox, here's a bunny and a hedgehog, all stuffed animals. Um, and it did that without looking for keywords, but really understanding sentence and semantics backwards and forwards. Well, this is cool. Now I want to see like how you do it. Can you, can you okay. show us? Okay. So um, we do have a try with your own feature, but first thing you have to do is go to our website and if you go to try to experience, um, you can actually play around with some demo data that we've created. But I will tell you the following. Demo data has limitations because, you know, I we can only um, have like licensing powers to so many items. But in a real store, there are more than seven sweaters, you know, or five types of cookies, or usually there are more. So what we have is an experience called try with your own data Ooh. that lets you basically um, upload your own file. And within less than five minutes, you would be able to start seeing results. Now, I, I wanted to make sure that um, everybody, even if they didn't have sample data prepared, could see what that looks like. Uh, so I'm gonna just try that out for you guys right now. So I'm gonna open this file. Yep, we see it. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, and I'm just going to save it to my documents. Okay, it's saved somewhere. I'll find it in just a moment. And then I can browse my files to get that download. And it's uploading. Submit so you it. can use your own data with this, uh, right? Yes. Is there like a special format that you need for this data? Yes. And for that, we even have a quick start guide where we show you exactly what data you can, you can get. Let me just skip to the bottom of this and show you um, a little bit about what that looks like, what that process looks like. So you'll go to Azure uh, portal, create your account, and you'll upload data in the following types of formats. So can you can you see this? This is yes, my interactions table. Yeah. So this has a column for a grouping ID, like if things were purchased on the same order. It has a pro product ID number, whatever that is. And you can ignore some of the other columns. And it has a user. And it has a transaction field, because that's what they were, and a timestamp. Everything else you can sort of either leave blank or, you know, where we ask you to just put one or two, just following this format. That's the bare minimum that you need. And you would actually have results like, I'll go back to uh, my thing. Let's see if I have results right now. Okay. It might take less than five minutes. If not, we'll come back. Okay. So you'll start to get results like this as soon as you upload your data. 
This is cool. So new, popular, Brussels sprouts. Like this is what um, we looked at to say, okay, can we get at least new and popular and people also like models? And that's what we were able to do. And so if you were to upload your own data with at least interactions, and if you put an image in, you would get this kind of experience right away. But if you try and to do a proof of concept with us, this whole quick start guide, which is not the five minutes, it's the, I would call it the five hours to maybe, uh, you know, a day to yeah. trying it out. And we've seen real customers do a full end to end solution with this, like completing, you know, getting their own data, putting it into our simple schema, which is really two tables and, you know, four columns that you have to fill in mm -hmm. uh, up and running within two weeks from start of data science to pumping in the service to getting their UI hooked up and then seeing results. And the kinds of results that people see um, are something like 95% increase in engagement. Um, that same customer had like a whopping degree of increase in their in their revenue. Um, internally, like even Microsoft Documents is now using this and they've seen a 600% growth in terms of interaction month over month. That's, that's really cool because it if we're in the business of having people use our nouns, whatever those things are, our items, when people are looking for things, it's, it's sometimes hard. That's why store shopping is so nice because you're like, oh, I like this color. And you, you go to that aisle of the store. That's hard to replicate in an online store or an online purveyor of nouns. This makes it really easy for folks to find things that they didn't even know they were looking for. Yep. Yep. And, and making it um, easy to even find the things you sort of had an idea about, but you couldn't verbalize or you didn't know the name for, um, but you just, you know, you, to even do comparison shopping, it makes it so much easier. In fact, like um, a lot of times people ask me, Moon, you know, how much should you make the homepage be beautiful and, and connect up with that with recommendations? And I say that's important to do, but don't forget the product detail page, like what we're seeing now, it's sort of an ascension analog of that. Mm -hmm. um, because people usually gravitate to one thing um, that they're interested in if it catches their eye, and then they really want to see the other stuff because they are usually very mission-driven. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's usually, I usually get the other stuff is what I, oh, that's what I what I actually wanted. Well, this is amazing. Uh, you, 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 you went to this website. Can you, can you tell us where people can go to learn more about this? Yeah, um, just go to intelligent dash recommendations.microsoft.com. Fantastic. And there's a little short link there, aka.ms intelligent recommendations. Is there anything else you want to add before we go? Uh, I hope you give it a try. Yeah. I mean, I, I know I will. If it's basically giving it, giving it data that you already have and then adding the feature at the end, even with the images, I think this is, I think it's amazing. I'm super excited to try it myself. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us, Moon. Yeah, it was it was fun. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us, you that are watching, and hopefully we'll see you next time. We've been talking all about intelligent recommendations with Moon King. We'll see you next time. Take care.